Hello, today we celebrate Holy Trinity. So we begin with the entrance antiphon. Blessed be God the Father and the only begotten Son of God and also the Holy Spirit, for he has shown us his merciful love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. God, our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification, made known to the human race your wondrous mystery. Grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith, we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever, and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. Early in the morning Moses went up Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him, taking along the two stone tablets. Having come down in a cloud, the Lord stood with Moses there and proclaimed his name, Lord. Thus the Lord passed before him and cried out, the Lord, the Lord, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and rich in kindness and fidelity. Moses at once bowed down to the ground in worship, and he said, If I find favor with you, O Lord, do come along in, your, in our company. This is indeed a stiff-necked people, yet pardon our wickedness and sins, and receive us as your own. The word of the Lord. Glory and praise forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our Father, fathers, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever, and blessed is your holy and glorious name, praiseworthy and exalted above all for all ages. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the temple of your holy glory, praiseworthy and glorious above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you on the throne of your kingdom, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you who looks into the depths from your throne upon the cherubim, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice. Mend your ways. Encourage one another. Agree with one another. Live in peace and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the holy ones greet you. 
the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit to God who is, who was, and who is to come. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. We have heard that when the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all the truth. We heard that last week, and we can pray about that always, that the Spirit comes to us to give us the truth. In my many years of education, I found that some concepts are accepted even though they are difficult to understand. I had a semester-long class in seminary on the Trinity, a semester-long class in the Trinity. I was often confused during the class. I got a C for a grade. As with anything I have trouble understanding, I want to ignore it or find shortcuts so that I can understand. Few things are more difficult to understand than the Christian doctrine of the Trinity. The doctrine that God is one in substance but three in persons. The one God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There are all kinds of stories and teaching methods that are used to simplify the doctrine. There are all kinds of ways that we come up with to relate God, relate to God without thinking of him as three persons. We may even relate to the Father and the Son and even the Holy Spirit as three separate divine beings. But the teaching of the church is three are one and we cannot separate them. The long tradition of the church is to say, this is orthodox, and this is proper teaching of the church, and this over here is not. This part that's not is called heresy. We reflect each weekend on the Trinity by reciting, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And if we don't believe that, then we are committing heresy. Yet neither will do the church, neither will do, and the church and its creeds make clear that we need to keep both the oneness and the threefoldness of God in our minds and hearts. In what we say of God and of God's relationship to us and our relationship to God, that God is Trinity is a fundamental experience of God which Christians have. It's not for us to turn it away or else we lack becoming, staying as Christian. God is Trinity. It's an experience that arises from the encounter with the person of Jesus Christ and the encounter with the Holy Spirit, who both come from the Father. It's not a doctrine which has been thought up solely in the speculation of theologians, but is the understanding that God which arises from the Christian experience 
is a saving action of God who created and sustained the world. To ignore the simplicity of the Trinity is, is to ignore or simplify Christian experience of God. It is to rob ourselves of the richness of the Christian encounter with God. Let it be mystery. Let us concentrate on the relationship of three persons of God that are so in love with each other they cannot be separated. I think if we stick to that idea, we can understand the Trinity. You can't move one away from the other. They all stay together. Every day Christians begin their prayers or other activities making the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. And when I teach the little kids the Trinity, I just constantly do the sign of the cross. I say, what are the three persons? And they might say, I don't know what you're talking about, Father. I say, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we can keep doing that as we enter our church, as we sit down to eat our meals, as we lay down to go to bed. Every time we say glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, the Trinity is with us. The Trinity may seem to be a list of divine persons rather than one God, but it is to remind us that God is so great that he, he is three persons in one, and we just keep being reminded of this. The intention of these prayers is to make clear the full divinity of all three persons. Our tradition and long-standing belief is the unity of God. There was a movie called Castaway with Tom Hanks. It was the story of a man, Chuck Nolan, whose Federal Express freight airplane crashes in a, on a desert island. And he has everything to survive. He has food and water and shelter, but he lacked human interaction. He used a volleyball, which he named Wilson, as a companion to which he interacted. Wilson was a volleyball with a bloody hand print as a face. The stranded man formed a relationship with Wilson. They even had arguments. One day while on a raft at sea during an attempt to escape, Wilson the volleyball floats away. When the main character of the castaway notices this, it's too late, leaving him to shout, Wilson, come back, I'm sorry. We as human beings need community because Almighty God in himself is a community of three persons, yet one Godhead. You might say that being in communion with others is built into who we are as human beings created by God in his image and likeness. So we need each other, just as the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit need to be one. We are called to communion because God is a communion. Because of the COVID-19 virus, we are separated and some will die due to the virus. Some will die due to loneliness. We are in the desert with our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jesus went to the desert before us and was victorious over the devil. We are embraced by God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in our isolation. We must stand strong and defeat the evil one. The unity of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit will be our salvation. Even in death, none of us will be separated from the love of God who is one in three persons, bound together in perfect love, such that the three persons are one God. When we go to heaven, we will all be one with our Lord Jesus, with the, with the Spirit, and with the Father in heaven. We look forward to that because the source of everything we are is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Because of the COVID-19 virus, many people fear death. We are called to believe that God sent his son to be one of us. In the incarnation, Jesus is both God and human. Jesus died on the cross to save us and to gather all people into one. Humans are one with God in life and in death. Our death does not separate us from God and others, but rather brings us together as one in a heavenly and perfect existence. 
In our death, we will be one with our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The cross of Jesus and our own death will be overshadowed by the resurrection of Jesus and our salvation in the oneness of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We confidently present our petitions before our faithful God who hears our concerns. For vocations to the ministries of the church, priesthood, religious life, lay, and diaconal ministry, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For vocations in the ministries of public life, civic leadership, education, health, community service, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For vocations to the ministries of liturgical life and prayer, through the conversion of hearts and minds to God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the strength to mend our ways and live in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For vocations to ministries of community building and confronting the world with love, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer from the COVID-19 virus, those who have died, those who are sick, for their families, and for all who are afraid, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our families, peace in our streets, and peace in the whole world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Holy God, you unite your people with love. Hear the prayers we offer for the church and the world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Bless me, God, forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O oh Lord, and forever. Let this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquities. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Sanctify by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in the trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in the confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity and substance and their equality and majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim too and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day as with one voice they acclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Walker, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace be with you, my, pe my peace be with you. Oh, let me start over. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. 
Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Peace to all of you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Excuse me. Communion Antiphon. Since you are children of God, God has sent into your hearts the spirit of his Son, the spirit who cries out, Abba, Father. Let us pray. May the receiving... May receiving this sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul as we confess your eternal holy trinity and undivided unity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ proclaiming the gospel by your life. I have one announcement. The bishop has allowed us to open our churches for a couple hours uh, each week until we reopen for the Eucharist. And there can only be 10 people or less in the church at a time. I will be standing outside of the church door monitoring that as you come in. You need to stay away from each other, have the distance, and you need to have a mask on, and you can pray, pray privately in the church. And here's the schedule. Wednesday, June 15th, from 5 until 7 p.m. at St. John in Ottawa. 5 to 7 p.m. at St. John in Ottawa. On Thursday, June 16th, at St. Joseph and Salix, 5 to 7 p.m. 5 to 7 p.m., Thursday, June 16th. Please keep your distance and wear a mask and you might have to wait outside if, if more than 10 people come for one of them to leave. And thank you and be kind to each other. I look forward to the day that we all come together at the Eucharist. <laughs>